Coleman Watts of the City CRM core team. Thanks, guy. So technically this talk is in the developer track, but if I'm not going to be getting very technical here. So if you if you know what a developer is, you're in the right room. Or if you've ever if you ever heard of an API, you're good. It's, it's going to be fine. Um, because I want to talk about where we've come and where we're going. So you might know that CiviSRAM has just come out with a brand new version. And not to get too technical here, but this is a big new number for Civi CRM. I actually did the math here, and I learned that six is greater than five. It's actually 20% more. <laughs> so this is what you're getting when you upgrade to Civi CRM 6. You're getting 20% more than Civi CRM 5. And the other thing that you might not know is that Civi CRM 6 comes with a new upgraded framework for entities, call it an entity framework, which we have now taken from what we've retroactively called version one to version two, which is 100% more. And that's, it's, it is that great actually, as you're gonna learn. So what is an entity? I don't know why developers use this term. It's stuff, it's your stuff. It's the stuff that Civi Serum keeps track of. And I want, because this is the 20th anniversary of Civi Serum, I do want to keep the spirit of looking at the history. And so let's just go back in time a little bit to the year 2005. And I, I went all the way back. You can like page through the Civi Serum blog all the way to like page 46. And there's a blog post from 2005 which shares the earliest screenshot I could find of Civi Serum version I think predating version one. Are, are you ready for this? It's actually not that bad looking. I mean, really, it's got the like bootstrap white that we later adopted, you know, many years later after going off from the gray. I, I think this is a screenshot of a V card. Uh, so this is not, not exactly what you see on the contact summary screen, but you'll recognize this next screen. Uh, which is create a new organization form. Uh, again, this is like, you know, Civi Serum 0.1. And so this was the beginning. In the beginning, there were contacts. That is, that's the C in CRM, I learned that. So that's where it began. But that's not where it ended. This is a journey, right? So we went from contacts to activities, events, contributions, cases, grants, memberships, mailings, pledges, reports, campaigns, the list goes on. Actually, the list kind of stopped there for a while <laughs> because adding each new stuff, entity, was a lot of work. It was a lot of developer time to do all of the things to make the stuff in Entity Framework version one. So, the next logical question that most people were asking was this one, what about goats? Because, well, this is also from the blog archive. This right here was published in 2013 on April 1st, <laughs> announcing that Civi Serum would be launching the first GRM for goat resource management, written by our very own Stube. It's a great read still. Um, and gets into a lot of the, the detail, the technical details of managing GOAT resources. But here's the cool thing. Entity Framework version two actually lets you do this. To back up, in version one, the reason that it was so you know, challenging to introduce a new entity in the Civi Serum was because there was a, a couple of steps that you had to go through. So you would have to write an XML file to define the schema, and you'd have to generate the install SQL and the DAO code, and, and then you regenerate the database, and then create a BAO class, and then write BAO CRUD functions, and then a query object, and add a search form and a views integration if you wanted to integrate with Drupal. You need to create a component for this, and 
and write an upgrader and then regenerate the database again. Um, and you would also need to add a quick form controller, quick form page, a Smarty template, menu XML. Uh, you'd have to insert that into the navigation menu. Uh, you'd have to write an API for it and CIVI reports for it because those were hard coded. Um, create a dashboard page and a summary tab, uh, which would have to have a data table AJAX callback because we upgraded data tables, uh, an importer class, and extend custom data so you could have custom data for your entity. <laughs> That's all. That's, that's all you had to do to create new stuff in CVCRM. And some brave souls actually did that. Uh, anybody here actually take on that challenge? Yeah, a couple of, yes, wow. What was that like? <laughs> you had fun. OK, good, good. You, you probably learned something along the way. Probably got frustrated a couple of times. Well. It, it wasn't that hard always, because there were a few upgrades to uh, version 1. So by CIVI Serum 3, you had hooks for entities. Somewhere around the 2, 3 cycle, you had hooks so that you could create an entity with custom code, rather than having to just hack it into CIVI Serum core itself. right? And by version 4, um, you could do this in extension. You know, somewhere in the three to four cycle, you, you had extensions that could create entities using those new hooks. And there was a new tool coming out called Civics, which could actually generate some of that boilerplate code for you, so you didn't have to handwrite everything. You just had to generate the boiler and then hand edit everything, which was way easier. <laughs> and by version five, uh, it was pretty much the same, honestly. And so I want to put a question to you. By version 6, which is where we are now, you know, 20% more than the last version, how many of these steps do you think we have eliminated? This is, uh, I think, 24 up here. Any guesses? 20%. That's, that's a good guess. That's a, that's a really good guess. That's what I would have thought, too. Yes, uh, that's, that's getting closer. Let's go with all of it. All of it. You don't have to do any of that to create a new entity. In fact, I'm going to do it right here, right now, in this presentation for you. It's true. And in, this, in, in honor of Civi Goat, let's create Civi Zoo. We can, we can do better. I always try to do a little bit better than, than where the bar has been set. OK, so you just need to install one extension, which is called ECK or Entity Construction Kit. This lets you do it all in the UI. And so we're going to, and once that extension is installed, um, just pretend that I just did that, you can go to this page called Entity Types. And from there, you can add a new entity type. Let's call it Animal. Let's give it an icon. The, the icon library is, is slightly limited, but extensible if you, I don't know, write a hook or something. OK, so we've created a new entity type. That was a bunch of things on the list right there. And I'll show you how that worked. Um, but now we need to add a few subtypes. So you know, there's a lot of things in the animal kingdom. Any suggestions for goat? Um, pig, sheep. I'm going to try to stick with things that are actually in the icon library. Let's see, what have we got? <laughs> Let's add a cow. All right. Is it a yeah. fields at all? Yeah, so we can do that in a minute. Let's add a new subtype. I'm trying to remember. I feel like I had a list of, uh, yeah, there's a list of animals. Um, oh, yeah, fish, dragon. Oh, dragon. Yeah, that's, I don't know, I don't know why, but put the dragons and the cows together. What could go wrong? <laughs> all right. That, that gets us started. We could, we could add more, but you know, we've got a finite time in this presentation. And I want to show you the cool stuff, not just the icons. So what that's done for us now, you know, thinking about that slide and all the things on it, which you've memorized, so you, you're following along, we've now got some custom entities that actually exist. So we can view the records, and we can add something. So we've got, so it's just generated this screen for us, which is search kit, and it's also generated a form, which is form builder. I'm a really creative guy. So we've, we've just added this to the menu also. So 
inserting into the menu. You can put it somewhere else, but this just gets you started. And to think about the other things that we talked about needing in your own entity, another one was trying to add it to the contact summary page and also adding fields to your entity. So let's look at that. Uh, customize data and you can add custom fields to your animal. And we'll just say that we can add this to any type of animal, but it could be specific fields for your dragon, for example. You might want more information about that. Okay, so let's add a custom field, and this is where it's going to get very powerful because we could add it, you know, a, a name of the animal. It already comes with a title. We could add something like subspecies, right? And that could be a thing. It could be a drop-down list that we create. You, you know how custom fields work. But let's add another field like owner. And let's make that an any reference field to individuals. Okay, maybe you see where I'm going with this. Let's now create the display for the owner to be able to see their animals. Okay, go to search kit and I'm going to create a new search for animals. It's going to have the title and the subtype. And, uh, we're going to get the owner display name and the subspecies if we wanted to know more about that. Okay, search here, we've got a cow. Um, animal by owner. And add a table. Could be a different type of display as I showed you yesterday. There's a lot of different types. In this case, I don't really need the owner display name. I'm going to take that off. We've got the display, animal by owner table. Good enough. You can customize it a lot, but good enough for now and I'm going to create a form. All right, this is going to be the animals and we're going to place it. We need to expose it to the contact summary tab. And I'm a stickler for this, we'll just keep the right icon. All right, you can pick where you want it. You can use the contact layout editor to specify more directly what you want in it, but this sort of gives you the idea. Um, owner is the contact being viewed. Okay, we could have picked any field for that, but we made one specifically for that purpose. Uh, I think I forgot to do one more thing in this display, which was to enable in the header a uh, toolbar for adding an animal. Yeah, let's add that toolbar. Okay, so now all that's left is to go to a random contact. A lot of contacts are named Adams. Nope, not by ID, by name. There's somebody named Adams. Okay, we've now got an animals tab. And we have an add animal dropdown. And we can add a good dragon name. Sparky. Oh my god, Sparky? Okay. <laughs> All right. As you can see, a little bit of magic glue in ECK has picked up on the fact that um, I just did a patch for this when I was preparing for this presentation because I was like, this should work. This should work. It does work now. It's, it's been merged um, to populate the owner based on the fact that we picked that field in search kit to be the one that filters. Okay, Sparky the Dragon is now owned by Winfred Adams. We've created now basically a whole new component of CVCRM. It's got a menu. It's got forms. It's got reports. It's got a contact summary tab. You can import the data. You can export the data. Um, how long did that take? Five minutes? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I mean, if you think of all of this, stuff, we just did all of this, all of it. And because this is a technically developer talk, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what you can do um, if you if you want to do it in code. And technically, this wasn't all Entity Framework version 2. This was like Lexa. This was, this was a, a push of a lot of different things in the same direction. This was API v4 that lets you expose new entities like that. And then Search Kit that picks up on those entities and can create searches and displays of them. Uh, it's Form Builder that can take those searches and put them into a form or connect them to forms. And the ECK extension, of course, which is a great um, community contribution that I've been involved in the development of, trying to push it in the same direction to get all of this stuff to work together. And 
So I just did all of this locally, you know, on my, for my own site. I did it for me. But what if I wanted to publish CiviZoo? What if I wanted to take everything that I just did in five minutes and clicked around, you know, total vibe coding here, and what if I wanted to package that as an extension so that other people could get everything that I've created? And, and it, say that I spent more than five, you know, obviously I'm going to create more interesting forms, more bigger sets of custom data, and make something that's worthwhile packaging. Well, we have a new tool called Civics Export. And so everything that I just did in the UI can be exported to an extension. All of the forms, all of the search kit searches, the entities themselves, the animal and the species and the subspecies, not the, not the data, but the, the structure that I just created for holding all of those, that data. All of that can be exported into an extension with just a few, you know, a few commands. Um, and so this code generator that I mentioned a while ago, Civics, that can generate boilerplate, can now take your, your creations in your UI, package it up for an extension, and we've, we've been seeing a lot of that packaging happen. Um, there's another extension that I mentioned yesterday, um, the Search Kit uh, Starter Pack, which is basically follows some of the same steps of somebody went into Search Kit, clicked around, made the search that they wanted, hit export, and put it in that extension, and now you can install that extension and get that search report as a, as a template for you to use and build upon, change, republish, uh, whatever you want. So, okay, I am going to get a little bit technical here because those are the extensions. What's the actual entity framework part of this? Well, in the good old days, if you wanted to create an entity, th these are the steps just for doing, and when I say entity, I mean a SQL table, you know, a thing to hold a bunch of records with a bunch of fields, maybe connected to other SQL tables, but that's the basic gist. To define that SQL table in CV Serum, you did that as an XML file. I think the original developers of CV Serum picked XML because it was there. It, it existed. It, it, they're easy to write. But the problem is, is that PHP can't read them very well natively. And so what they would do is they would take that XML file, they created this whole code generator that would turn that into a PHP file and a SQL file and also generate a DAO file. And so all of that stuff had to be generated. And the painful part was that if you needed to change anything in the XML, you had to regenerate all of those different files. And then if you wanted to install the SQL, you had to copy the generated SQL into an upgrader. And then your CRUD functions in BAO had to be also handwritten. You needed to say, if I want to create a contact, these are the things that I need to do to save the data to the table. I need to take the first name and save it here, and the last name and save it here, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What V2 does is it streamlines that all into a single entity type file. These have been around for a little while um, before as like little civic stubs, but we've taken those and just used them everywhere. And so instead of having to generate PHP, you just write the PHP file and it is done. The file can be directly used in the upgrader. The file directly is the canonical source of fields. It is effectively the DAO. Just that one source, no code generation, that's it. Um, and so it, it's, it's really helpful for, um, for streamlining things and you don't I mean, you don't, if you're using ECK or you're doing all of this point and click, you don't really need to know this. But if you're a developer and you want to do this more by hand and you want to get into the code, I just want to let you know that getting into the code is not so bad now. <laughs> and if you have existing extensions that have defined entities in XML, which is the way you would have done it up to this point, there is now a command civics upgrade, which will take those XML files and turn them into PHP files and take all of the generated boilerplate and delete it. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> you know, you can commit it or not, but it, it, will, it will delete all the boilerplate, move everything into that one canonical source file, and your extension should work after that. Try it. I've, I've done it. You know, Search Kit used to be defined with XML files, Form Builder, all of the, all of the core extensions that had um, tables and all the extensions that I maintain, I've upgraded them all using this process from the XML to the PHP file, they all still work. Um, both, of these, both of these systems work side by side. 
You can have some extensions that you're doing it the old way, some extensions doing it the new way. It's fine, they'll all play together nicely. Um, but the goal is to eventually get everything onto V2 so we don't have to deal with that legacy stuff anymore. And that's it. Thanks for, thanks for listening to the talk. <laughs>